Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello everyone, my name is Nasheri Fadila and this is my partner Muhammad Nazil Fakhani. Today we will present our research called Icolin in silica design of pro insulin production in transgenic aloe vera chloroplast using particle bombard. So in the top left corner we could see a table which shown the diabetes prediction in 2030 compared to 2010. And it showed the 10 major countries with the most diabetes in the world. And it it also show us that by 2030 there will be a significant increase in the amount of diabetes in the world. And it is also predicted that by 2030 the amount of insulin needed will rise by more than 20% worldwide. And half of those in it will lack access to insulin. Therefore, we conclude that we need another alternative to cope this high insulin demand in the future with a more efficient and effective approach. And these are our objective and goals. Generating computational data and research experiment as a base for further in vitro and in vitro research in creating transgenic aloe vera plant for the pro insulin. And our limitation as the experiment is used uh, in silica design and haven't been tested for in vitro experiment yet. And the novel proof <coughs> is pro insulin production in transgenic plants have been researched before, such as transgenic tobacco mediated by agrobacterium synthetation. Well, in this research, we over an insulin approach to producing raw insulin within the chloroplast as a, of the transgenic aloe vera plants using particle bombardment. This is our literature review. As we can see that in silica is commonly used nowadays because it needs shorter period of time and cost relatively less than in vitro and in vitro. This is the comparison between preferred insulin, pro insulin, and insulin. And this is the confrontational mode for transgenic insulin in bacteria. Uh, as you can see, these are the advantages and disadvantages of it. The, the table show us the current method problem using echoing. Therefore, we offer another alternative that's based on biotechnology, and we choose one transgenic because it's more economical, high scalability, high expression, and there are post translational modification. And we choose aloe vera for a, for a few reasons. The first reason is the ease of extra extraction, as the transgenic pro insulin will be localized in, in specific area, and there is also high production rate, and aloe vera can be cultivated in many places and aloe vera also has to post transitional modification and in this map we could see the distribution map of aloe vera in the world while in this table we could see the data of aloe vera cultivation and production from the Pontianak Agricultural Department for the expressional system we use this table expression and using particle bombardment and for plus as a expression as a function Based on the table, we can see the comparison between the system. So, which is particle bombardment because it's very flexible for the chloroplast targets. As we know that the chloroplast has the double membrane that's uh, difficult to, to, to utilize in other systems. So, these are the advantages and disadvantages of particle bombardment. So, here are the methodology. So in our research, we use different data resources and software which are shown in this slide. And in here we show the, uh, the linear sequence of human pro-insulin before and after optimization. And for optimization itself, we use the codon usage table from Kasusa database species 34199. And after optimization, we do pairwise alignment to align the DNA and the protein sequence for before and after optimization. And after that is complete, we continue to the vector assembly. And the first step of vector assembly is the primary design and PCR. Our primary is designed automatically using snap gene for PCR, and the restriction sites are added manually based on the data from our restriction mapper. <coughs> And then the second step is doing virtual electrophoresis and virtual digest. And here we also shown the data from our virtual digest. And in the next and in current slide, there is also the data from the virtual electrophoresis. And then the last step is the cloning. We use Snapgene to simulate insertion cloning with the help of T4 ligation enzyme. 
The factor we use for cloning is Pcambia 1300 cloning factor and we clone the, our three gene of interest into the multiple cloning site of Pcambia. And the next one is about uh, the in vitro experiment procedure as, as you can see in current slide. And then we do the title visualization and analysis. For the 3D model visualization, we use the uh, ABA Initio method by using uh, the software from Robeda Baker Lab. And then we visualize the 3D model using PyMol. And we also analyze it using PyMol as you can see in the current slide. And here's data from the analysis using PyMol. And as you can see, there, there is the number of atoms, the formal charges, the partial charges, the surface area, and molecular weight. The conclusion, Oleifera is suitable as the transmit plant for before insulin. Oleifera has been researched by many scientists, especially in terms of protein content and various properties. And also Oleifera over various of pathogens, including ease of modification and extraction, making it more economical and lowering of, of domination by the toxic substances and requiring relatively short time with high production yields just increasing productivity, especially in tropical regions such as Indonesia. And through the data gathered from Pontianak Agricultural Department, Oleifera also have a high rate of production, thus making it a promising natural and eco-friendly insulin production factory. Our Insulico experiment has also shown that Oleifera is capable of, produce, of producing insulin, although more tests is needed to measure the effectiveness of, of transgenic Oleifera insulin. These are the references that we used. Um, this okay. That's all our presentation. Thank you for thank you. Udahlah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.